When I make a curb log, I tell you all what I think. I just saw Toy Story 4 and Bo's no longer pink. They can't all be winners, guys. Sorry. <laughs> all right. It's uh, 1230 at night on uh, the night of, uh, of Tuesday. Well, it's Wednesday now, whatever. You're hearing this Thursday. It doesn't matter. Time travel. Uh, I just saw Toy Story 4 with a bunch of my friends and uh, thoughts. So uh, this is one of those things where I've probably said this about other Disney movies in the past. Uh, and and it, it always seems to be. Disney and Pixar movies that I just get so excited about that I got to watch like every trailer about and, and get myself really hyped up. And I, I, I feel like this is the, more than ever before I regret looking at all the scenes because I feel like I saw most of this movie already. <laughs> um, I went in, you know, having seen basically every bit of footage that was available on the internet already uh, between trailers and previews and whatever. Uh, and, you know, I watched lots of behind the scenes info and everything. I knew a lot of what the basic gist of the movie was going to be uh, and, and the kind of general theme of what they were going for and everything. So really, it just came down to seeing a couple of different twists, what those were ultimately going to be in terms of, I guess, who was the antagonist and, you know, what ultimately Woody's final decision uh, was going to be, I guess, in terms of his future, uh, you know, and all that. And I kind of regret having looked at so much of it because I feel like that did kind of interfere with the experience and, and that's entirely on me. But nonetheless, um, I did that in the first place because I was really excited for this movie. Uh, and, you know, as, as you guys saw, I rewatched uh, all the original trilogy um, just to, like, get as prepared as possible and everything and, you know, kind of see uh, sort of the whole progressive arc of everything and, you know, seeing this, God, like, you know, 20, 25 year long journey that, uh, the entire crew that, that, that's, that's created this, this series of movies, uh, has been through. Um, and, uh, so I guess, I guess before going into the, the really serious thoughts, I'll just kind of cover, you know, kind of movie from moment one onward. Um, weirdly, I feel like the whole entire opening uh, up until when, when, and you know, oh, by the way, uh, spoilers, obviously, but anyway, um, everything up until when Forky, uh, throws himself out the window and freedom and all that, the whole opening to some extent, not, not a hundred percent, but, but to a certain extent, the entire like opening bit of the movie, uh, all the way through the, the Randy Newman song about how don't throw yourself away, <laughs> like. I kind of felt a little bit like I was watching like an extended parody of a Toy Story movie. Like, like, like kind of like if, if it was, ugh, God, I really hate saying this, but like if it was like a robot chicken sketch of which, you know, there have been many previously, um, you know, like, like, like kind of like the idea of that, like, oh no, we, we got to make sure that we go keep Bonnie company, everybody. And, oh, and then she makes a, 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 a toy made out of, stuff or whatever and oh man we got to deal with that and it's crazy and things get wacky and he keeps throwing himself in the trash and it's goofy hijinks and everything like it was so like cartoony and tonally kind of different than what it was used to uh that, that like it, it felt something about it tonally felt like kind of like a like a parody of, of what toy story typically is um and i get you know what they were going for you know the the, the whole conceptualization of forky i think was a very clever idea uh, and was, um, you know, like, like, a, like an interesting choice and, and a good new direction to go in terms of not treading old ground or anything and kind of introducing, uh, you know, things that we hadn't explored already in the Toy Story, uh, you know, universe, I guess you could say. Um, and, uh, and Tony Hale is really funny. He does a great job on, on the performance and everything as well. Um, as far as the other new characters go, uh, I loved well you know, the, the the new version of Bo Peep. You know, I, I guess the expanded upon version of Bo Peep uh, was very interesting because obviously in the first two movies she's just kind of the the token female character that doesn't actually get to do a whole lot. Um, so them giving her a full on real role in this one, like her her true characterization this time around, I felt was was great. Uh, they, 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 they did an excellent job with her, uh, and she was very likable. Um, and then as far as the new characters go, Duke Boom was, uh, was all right. I mean, you know, the love for Keanu is, is strong right now after in the wake of E3 and everything. 
um, Giggles McDimples uh, being a little tiny Polly Pocket toy was super clever, and she was a really likable kind of uh, faux, uh, no, not not faux pas, uh, like like a, a partner, a fo- foil to uh, to Bo. She had a few good gags mixed in there. Um, so did Bunny and Ducky, but I, I hate seeing this too. As much as I love Keen Peel, I felt like those characters didn't add too much. In fact, I felt like at times they kind of slowed things down. I don't know. They they, they had good gags, and and the the um the riffing between the two of them uh was was very well done. But in terms of their actual like inclusion to like the story, it, ugh, I don't know. They they just didn't really do it for me, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> side note, not not a not a, a super significant character, but shout out to Bonnie's poor dad <laughs> who had so much nonsense to deal with, and also I loved the the weird obsession that the the un the sparkly unicorn character whose name I forget from Toy Story Three being absolutely obsessed with like I wanna I wanna send Bonnie's dad to jail. It's gonna be so good. I'm like, dude, uh talk to somebody about that man. Uh also did like that uh Dolly was kind of like the the like, hey, haha, I'm the leader. This is my job. I've been here longer than you, Woody. How about chill out please, just because you're going through an existential crisis. <laughs> that was kind of nice. Um, yeah, the, the, as far as the mainstay cast went, um, obviously Woody and Buzz, I think were, were utilized, um, very well. Uh, Jesse was, was kind of just like, you know, she had her purpose, but funnily enough, uh, another bit of a side note, I watched, um, uh, Toy Story of Terror, uh, her whole thing in that short is excellent. And I feel like that was kind of the end of her, like, interesting character development, um, so in this one, like she was fine, but you know, didn't get to do a whole lot. And then the others, I feel like were just kind of like, there's a courtesy, I guess. I, I don't, I don't know quite how to put it, but like, they were just, they were just kind of there. Um, and, and like granted, maybe to some extent they're, they're kind of like that, like throughout all of the movies, but like, it really felt like it more than anything in this one. Um, the big highlight, uh, in terms of a new character, uh, was, uh, and, and, and even mixed in with the old characters too, was, uh, Gabby Gabby. Um, for a while, it seemed like I, I probably bought into this as well as a few of my friends were thinking like, oh, Bo's probably the twist villain somehow, um, which I'm glad was not the case and that they did something nice with her. Um, Gabby Gabby in, in the, in the initial scene that they, that they show of her, the preview scene that they put up online, uh, with, uh, I guess just promoting that Christina Hendricks was in the movie. Um, it's pretty obvious, like from the get go, here's the antagonist, um, not the villain quite, but, uh, which I liked that she wasn't evil necessarily. Um, but screwed up in the head tremendously. Um, she was really interesting. Uh, you know, the, the, I, I felt like I feel like the the villains of Toy Story have been uh, progressively like better and better uh, between well from from two onward with with uh, Prospector followed by Lotso and then followed by Gabby Gabby in terms of like uh, toys feeling scorned and and you know uh, underutilized and things basically representing people that. Uh, weren't loved as much as perhaps they could have or should have been, and um, Gabby Gabby I think was is, is maybe maybe even to some extent uh, the the best the best executed uh, of those characters. I, I loved that they actually ended up humanizing. Well, actually, before even that, I loved that they just kind of straight up from the get go made apparent like this is the antagonist. This character is a threat and a danger and is just is a little bit disturbing. Uh, I liked that they didn't just like string you along for like 30 to 40 minutes and like, Oh man, tension rising. You know that probably she's the bad guy or whatever. Like, I'm glad that there was no like twist character. They were just upfront with her. And uh, because of that, I think that that led to, uh, you know, her being a much more sympathetic character. Um, you know, the, the, the scene with uh, her being thrown away, like immediately by the girl that she was like coveting, uh, like it actually kind of hurt. Um, and then even, um, uh, I, I, but that said also the, <laughs> the resolution for her, were just like, oh, they're, you know, granted, yes, I know a kid getting lost at a carnival is a fairly normal practice and everything, but just like the, oh, how convenient. And then this girl or whatever. And, and granted, I do still like that better than just her being taken along with Bonnie. Uh, cause you know, I guess maybe that would have been like, Bonnie's the solution to everything. And then ultimately Bonnie isn't the solution to everything as you know, Woody makes his choice, of course, but um, I felt like maybe something with that could have been done a little bit better and, you know, just maybe to make it a little bit more satisfying. It was, it was fine. It was fine. But like it, one of those things I think could have been maybe improved upon a little bit. Maybe it was, I'm sure it was probably like rewritten 
over and over again, as, as is often the case with Pixar movies. But yeah, um, so yeah, as far as the new characters and the and the execution of the old characters and everything go, um, but of course, um, Woody, well, and and Buzz too, uh, with with the usage of the the sort of inner voice, uh, inner voice, inner voice thing. Excuse me, uh, loved the concept of that as well. I mentioned in the uh, the retrospective I did of the first three movies, this sort of weird sort of like cross between uh like loving a child like like a family sense and almost like a like a god worship kind of thing i guess in in, in some senses it, it make, makes for a really interesting uh, like like just sort of life that all of these characters kind of collectively live and so kind of having this you know if woody was built in the in the 50s and he's you know essentially i guess 70 or 80 right years old now but yeah something like that um but in some sense being, I guess, I don't want to say cursed with immortality, but I, I guess maybe to some extent, sure. Uh, and, and like, how do you choose to, li you know, to, to, to utilize your existence, you know, for the sake of, of other people or, or for yourself and, you know, all those kind of things. It's like, I just going into it, like what, what they did with that, I loved and, and, and like having your entire worldview changed by, you know, the types of people that, uh, that influence you in the way that they do. Like, you know, Bo, you know, and, and I guess in a sense of like, you know, toys in this universe are built to love and, and care for the, you know, their kids uh, that, you know, they're, they're supposed to be played with by and, and, and you know, be there for when they need them. Um, and then you have a case where like, well, you know, it's not just that Woody and Bo have this affection for each other. And, you know, that's, that's one thing and that it's a love story, but, but also uh, that it, it's it's more so about like Woody making a choice for himself uh, over you know over the people that he feels obligated to. Um, so I did like that a lot. I I wish um, even though I know that Buzz was always being supportive to Woody and and consistently was throughout uh, the entirety of this movie, not just all the other ones, of course, but particularly in this one. Um, I do wish that maybe there was some point for buzz to have kind of seen the positive side of of if woody were to leave um you know because it it it, it felt a little bit like i i did like the moment of him being like bonnie will be okay without you do what you want to do but i felt like it maybe could have been earned a little bit more uh in, in in at least in terms of like the logic behind like you know buzz kind of figuring out that like yeah this is what needs to be the case um, you know, but, uh, I don't know. Yeah. That, I guess in, in the long run, um, I conceptually loved this movie. Uh, oh, some other little side things, um, setting wise, uh, the carnival was a great idea for like a, a, a new kind of different setting for the movie. Um, the, uh, the music was fantastic. Even my joking aside about the Randy Newman thing. Uh, I actually really loved that there were a lot of uh, motifs from, I think, pretty much all of the previous movies uh, that were utilized and kind of redone in, in a new way for uh, for various parts. Uh, I loved that. That was that was very cool and kind of a nice sort of culmination of everything. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, the themes that they chose to explore, this worked for a really good uh, epilogue to Toy Story 3's sense of finality. Um, that said, I think three is the better movie. Uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll feel differently when I watch this one again. Um, I liked it. I had a great time. I think it's an excellent Pixar film. Um, and, uh, and I'm glad that they did make it. I'm not in the camp of like, Oh, cash grab. I mean, well, you know, to some extent I know it is, but so is everything, you know, it's not good. It's not dive down there at that rabbit hole. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm not in the camp of like, oh, like they didn't have to keep making like, like, look, if they wanted to make another one, if they had another story to tell, cool. Um, I sincerely doubt we're going to get a fifth one. So, you know, I'm going to more or less treat this for the time being as the new ending. Um, but I think in terms of just story, uh, three is, I think is, I think is the best one now looking back at all of them, um, overall. And I think it's because it, it makes me the most emotional uh, Toy Story, three, Toy Story four, there weren't really any, I mean, like there, there were a couple moments where I was laughing. There were a couple moments where I got kind of emotional and, and, and affected, but like nothing made me 
really, really like laugh my brains out. Nothing made me cry. Like it, it just, it didn't have the same impact on me. And, and, and like, I just rewatched one, two and three and uh, you know, they all affected me. I think to the same extent, you know, one, I think uh, I saw with new eyes compared to the progression of the, the, the improvements they made on the second and third one, but like three still got to me. Like it's still, still got to me in the exact same way as when I saw it the first time. Uh, it's just, it's excellent. Four didn't do that for me. It's very well could be because I hyped myself up a little bit too much, uh, being in love with the concept of like, what do you do next and self-exploration and self-actualization, uh, challenging your worldview and, uh, and just seeing so much of the footage ahead of time. And maybe, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't know what my expectations were it, that, that might've been a factor and that's, that's on me. That's not on the filmmakers. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm a little sad that maybe it, it, it didn't, it didn't end up topping how good three was. Uh, and, and that's a shame. Um, but still enjoyed it. Still think it's worth seeing. Um, I am curious to hear what people's thoughts are. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, if, if you have any other criticisms or, 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 or defenses for the movie, uh, let me know. This is, uh, this is just kind of my offhanded thoughts. I've been trying to do these kind of like fresh, uh, you know, as soon as I can, can, uh, think of them, curb blogs <laughs> as of late, but, um, yeah, uh, let me know your thoughts and, uh, I don't know what the next curb blog will be. I guess we're already going into, into, into July now. My God, this month, uh, kind of flew by really quickly, but we've got the Tome charity auction going on. Summer games done quick is happening at the moment. Of course. Doing an anime expo for one day next weekend, uh, so I got a lot going on. But uh, and I'm still working on the game and everything. But yeah, went to go see this and uh, still had a good time. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you got any other career blog topic suggestions down the line. But uh, thanks for listening and uh, to infinity and beyond. Bye.